Hello, in this video I'm going to be doing an overview of the 3D platform kit. So if we just click play, we should start in the main menu level. And if I click this new game, it's going to create a new save for this game, which is stored the amount of coins we have, the amount of lives we have, and whether we've beaten level 1 or level 2. So then I'll just go up and collect all these coins, and then close this, then head to my level 1 folder. The game will save how many coins the player has. So let's check out the different actors that we can place and interact with. So the first one is this checkpoint. And when my player overlaps this checkpoint, say if he dies by like falling off the world or if an enemy kills him, he's going to respawn at the latest checkpoint he was at. So he's going to respawn where we just went. So that's how the checkpoints in this work. The next thing are these coins. So these are placed all over the level. And the way they work is, when my player collects 100 coins, it's going to give him an additional life. The next thing is this death box. So the way this works is, I've just placed it in level 1, and there's this invisible box. When my player overlaps this invisible box, it will just instantly kill him, and he'll lose a life. So the next thing are these falling platforms. So if I just go up to one, go on it, it'll turn around and begin to fall. And after a couple of seconds, it will respawn, and we can test it out again. If you want to change the settings in any of the blueprints, you just go up in here. So for example, this falling platform, I've set it so that after we go on it, it changes to a dark red, and then after one second, it will begin to fall. So if I could change it here and make it 0.1 seconds. So after being on this for 0.1 seconds, it would fall. And this is how long it takes to respawn. So I can make it after five seconds, it will respawn once we go on it. So if I click play, after being on this for 0.1 seconds it will fall and then it will respawn after 5 seconds. The next actor we're going to look at are going to be these spikes, so we can just place them in the level. And if I click play, I go to it, if I get hit by it, I get damaged. And eventually they can kill me if I get hit by one of them and I have no more lives. So the next actor are going to be these hearts. So these heal the player, so if I click play, and get hit by a spike, I lose some health, but if I collect a heart, it will heal me again. And say I try and collect a heart and I'm already healed, it will just destroy the heart as I already have full health. So the next actor we can look at will be these moving platforms. So the way they work is they move from location 1 to location 2 at a certain speed. You can control the locations with these little points, so this tells you this is location 2. So I can make this move here. I can make the speed be something like 0.5 and if I click simulate it moves very fast between those two points but say I wanted it to be much slower I can make it move like 10 and then click play and it will take a very long time to move between those two points so the next actor we'll look at can be a sign so we can just place these and here we can enter the text so I can write signs are cool and then if we just click play go up they'll say press e to read so if we press e it'll say signs are cool then we can just close it with this box and then one other actor are these trampolines so you can control how high each trampoline goes so i can make this one something like 500 and if i play trampoline on trampoline boom, it'll launch me 500. That isn't very high, so maybe you want to increase it to something like 1,800. If I click play, jump on the trampoline, it'll launch me really high. So maybe that's a bit too high, but those are basically trampolines. So next we can take a look at some of the enemies in the game just to see how they work. So there are two enemies in this, and the first enemy is this line. The way it works is when you get in its range, so if I stand in front of it, and it sees you, it'll begin to chase the player, and it can hit the player, but the player can also hit it and kill it. So we need to be in this line's radius for it to attack and see us. The next enemy is in level 2, and is the boss enemy. So the way this works is it will always constantly try and rotate and face the player. It will move towards the player, and when the player is close enough, it will try and jump. This is our opportunity to attack the boss. So it will attack, and if it misses, we can jump on its back. But say I failed, it would hit me and I'd get damaged. But say I want to attack this box, boss, I'll have to trick it. 
make it jump and then jump on its back. And if I do this three times, it will destroy the boss and kill him. So the next thing we're going to look at is the save system. So in this project, there's the save game. I'm going to save the amount of coins the player has, the amount of lights he has, and whether he's been in level 1 or level 2. And this save is first shown when we're at, in the main menu level. When we click play, it will open up this HUD. And in this HUD, this main menu, if we go to the graph, you can see as soon as it's shown, it will create a save game object for our player, which will save all those variables that I just talked about. And when we click on the new game button, it will wipe our save, so it will set our player to have zero coins, it will set him to have five lives, so you can change the amount of lives that the player starts with, so you can make it three for example, and it will set it so that he's not being level one and level two, and then it will open level one, so it will just completely wipe the save. But say we already have an existing game, we can just click the load game button, which will open up the level select level, and on the level select level, it will show this level 1 and level 2, so if we try and click on the level 1 button, we can simply just open level 1, but if we try and click on the level 2 button, we need to have unlocked level 1 to play level 2, so for example, if I click play and go load game, I can't play level 2 because I've not unlocked it, but I'll be able to play level 1 instantly, and if I beat level 1, so I just happen to be at the end of level, So now I've beaten level 1, I'll be able to play level 2. So if I click level 2, it'll take me to level 2 where I can fight the boss. So I'm just going to show you how that works in a bit more detail. So if I head over to level 1, and we can see at the end of the level, I have placed this actor. This actor is called level 1 unlock. And the way it works is, when my player overlaps it, it goes to the save game and tells it that we've beaten level 1. And then it'll open up the level select level where we can select our different levels again. <coughs> we also have level 2 unlock to tell the game that we've beaten level 2. And where this is, is in the enemy boss character. When we completely destroy the boss and have killed him, I will spawn into the world level 2 unlock. And level 2 unlock does a very similar thing. It tells the save game that we've beaten level 2 and it takes us to the level select menu. So that's just an overview of the 3D platform kit. So there's one more thing I want to show you. A person requested that I add a um, wall jump, so I'm going to add a wall jump update to this kit, which will allow the player to jump from wall to wall. So look out for that soon. If you have any other suggestions on or ideas that you'd like added to this project, just email me. That's all. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next time. Bye.